Before we begin, shout out to the jewellery from Fabiha Fashion. Always hooking it up last minute for me. Thank you so much. And oh my God, I just got caught. This is my PJs, by the way, guys. So <laughs> anyway. Keeping in mind. guys assalamu alaikum welcome back to my channel if you guys like what you're seeing right now please pause this video right now hit the like button subscribe to my channel so this is my take on a 2020 nikah hijabi bride this is what i'm envisioning with makeup with outfit color choices with jewelry and nikah makeup is really really easy it's supposed to be really youthful lightweight glowy dewy very light on the eyes and that's what i kind of kept in theme my sari is a stunning baby blue i actually wore this sari to my birmingham ladies night and i had so many compliments then but i think i've done it more just is today turning it into like a nikah sari outfit my sari is from Dooley on green street shout out asif bai i love those guys man i drove them crazy when i was looking for this sari for my birmingham ladies night and he literally got it ready for me within two weeks so yeah guys go and check out Dooley on green street not that you guys don't already everyone in east knows about Dooley. if you like this look and you'd like to see how i've created it then keep on watching so for my skin prep i'm gonna go in with the glow elixir in my opinion the glow elixir is very very similar to the ombriolis it comes in a tube it's very very moisturizing for anyone with dry skin and if you have used this and the ombriolis you guys will know that this is just that little bit more um softer to the touch compared to the ombriolis i'm gonna get that all over my face and make sure i concentrate some on my under eyes it's packed with lavender lemon peppermint everything to really hydrate your skin and chestnut extract as well then it is your big day it is your nikah you are going to sweat in those areas so to control that sweat we're going to go in with the farsali skin tune which is kind of like a mattifying cream i'm going to use that just around my nose area really rub that in and just mattify that area just to close off any pores and stop it from sweat because it's a very special day you know guys and then to further prep my skin and make it look really really dewy i'm gonna go in with a beauty oil the one that i'm using is called Espa. and leaving the nose out of this i'm literally gonna put a few drops on my face which you can barely probably see on camera take a beauty blender distributes the oil on the face without making my face look greasy oils are really really good to make your skin look dewy but you just have to apply it the right way and i feel like a sponge really helps take away that extra oil and just leave that sheen on your face okay i've done my brows offline they barely need filling in i like them thick these days and on a special occasion i like using the mac deep dark brunette with my zoeva brush for days this is a 322 brow line angle brush for my eyeshadow base i'm going in with the kevin Kwan sensual skin enhancer concealer in the shade sx08 this is a little bit more thicker than my usual and it just gives a little bit more grip to anything that you're going to apply on top and the consistency is very similar to the MAC soft ochre paint pot I would say it's just a little bit more thinner than the paint pot but it does the same thing because there's a lot more thickness to it so there's just that much more grabbing power when it comes to a eyeshadow sitting on top of this base unless I have a lot of pigmentation that I want to cover up on my eyelids I would not use this for every day this is definitely like a special occasion concealer only because it's so opaque this is your special day you want to camouflage any blemishes any dark areas I'm gonna make sure I'm covering right the way to the lash line. This is my special day. For transition, I'm gonna reach out to my Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. I'm gonna take this shade here, which is the Burnt Orange. Everybody has a favorite browns matte palette that you guys kind of reach out to for your transition shades. This is mine. I love using the Burnt Orange. And I'm just gonna go slightly high up. Notice how I haven't gone in with any brow highlight yet. I wanna stay away from the typical silvers, the typical blues, the typical golds. And I wanna go in with a kind of like a dull gold. My brush is super, super soft. The brush that I'm using is the Morphe M441. And notice how it's more of a straight line only because I have hooded eyelids. So if you have hooded eyelids, all of my tutorials are for you. I'm going way up to the brow, keeping it all straight and really buffing, keeping everything soft and pulling out from my brow. It's more like a left, right, left, right sliding motion rather than a window wiper motion. By the way, my nose feels really, really matte from that Farsali Skin Tune Blur thing. What, what was it called? I didn't even mention it properly. The Skin Tune Blur Primer. Now I'm gonna take the Huda Beauty Melted Matte Shadows and I'm gonna take the Shimmer side. And this is called Penthouse Suite. 
It's a metal liquid eyeshadow. It's a very dead brown gunmetal, I would call it. These dry and set really, really quick, so you have to be very fast in working with them. And that's it for the eyes. I'm either gonna go in with a straight liner and stop towards the end of the lash line, or I might wing it out. Let me think about it. But when it comes to Nikar makeup, it's supposed to look very minimal, very barely there, very innocent, very fresh, very youthful, very glowy. So when it comes to your bridal makeup, and if you go a bit more heavier with the eyeshadow, you have a change in the days and the looks that you created. That's why everyone goes lighter from their any car to their Mendy to their wedding day. And that's why all the looks look different because the final look on the wedding day is supposed to be like, wow, wowzers. And then back to Walima, you go into like that fresh, youthful, glowy, just married kind of look. I'm gonna use the Extreme Art Liner Pen from Artists of Makeup. Zucria smashed the game when she launched this liner. Till this day, this is what I love using. I've got so many liners here, but when it comes to doing a wing liner, which I've decided to do, I love using the extreme art liner pen hooded eyelids in that I'm gonna do this off camera okay and for lashes I'm gonna go in with Faye lashes this is one of my favorite styles when she first launched these are called Abu Dhabi look how stunning they are please and while I wait for my lashes to dry I'm gonna go in with my favorite color corrector you guys know this by now this is probably one of the only ones that I use this is the NYX dark circle in the shade deep 04 I'm just gonna cover my breakouts as well take it onto my lips as well it's my special day and my lips look so weird right now before i go in with any foundation i'm gonna go in with the forsali rose mist skin something uh rose gold skin mist and i'm gonna spritz my face almost to prep it before foundation for foundation i'm gonna go in with two items for foundation i'm gonna go in with the hourglass vanish seamless liquid foundation and then for highlighter drops i'm gonna go in with the revolution liquid highlighter in the shade liquid champagne i've got some drops painted on here because they're not really drops it's more of like a cream paste and just some here then i'm gonna go in with some foundation very few drops just depending on your skin really and whatever works but i think for nikar makeup the lighter the foundation the better because everything is just all lightweight this shade for me guys is gold i don't like looking too light the warmer I look the better but obviously your skin your color your foundation choice for concealer I'm gonna go in with two shades I'm gonna go in with the Mac studio fix 24-hour smooth wear concealer in the shade NC 38 and this is more of a salmon tone for me so this will kind of help set and neutralize my under eyes super easy to work with one thing i would say about the mac studio fix concealers is firstly they're really runny which is not a problem but they literally oxidize within four minutes which is not really fair on people who spend a lot of money on high-end concealers like that but anyway because i have a deeper foundation on i'm going to go in with a deeper toned concealer which is the huda beauty overachiever concealers you guys know i love these concealers this is in the shade graham cracker yeah i'm gonna press that in placement of your lashes is everything guys i don't like placing them too close to like the beginning of the lash line i like to kind of start just a bit way off and that way it just helps create that winged out buttery fluttery lash away from like the inner corners and that's how i apply my lashes for contour, I'm gonna use my Baked Mineral Bronzer from Il Maquillage in the shade Wannabe. Even though my foundation is dark and this is what I'd normally use on my lighter colored foundation, I wanna keep everything subtle. So I'm deliberately going in with a sort of subtle tone for this shade foundation. And I hope you can see like the finish of the foundation, the way it sits on the face. This is from all of the prep that we did beforehand, like with the oil, the moisturizers. So prepping your skin is so key, especially like, I don't know, doing masks and skincare for the run up to your car. For blusher, I'm gonna go in with the MAC Cosmetics blusher in the shade Melba. It's such a, I don't even know what to call it, like a sweet blusher. To bake my under eyes, I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Setting Powder. This just really works for my skin tone. I absolutely love the finish of this. It doesn't wash me out, it doesn't make me look gray. It just keeps all of the color of the concealer there as well. But I'm not gonna let it sit for too long at all. I don't want any dry under eyes. I want it all to look just really nice and soft and dewy. And I'm just gonna take my blush brush and kind of go over my nose as well. If you've noticed guys, I've not even added any crease eyeshadow on the crease area of my eyelids. I've kept it really, really clean and kind of neutral my lower lashes and just blending the falsies together i'm going to go in with the il maquillage icon mascara in black 
this wand is life guys and the formula on this mascara is so good like i beg you guys try this mascara for lips i'm definitely going to finish with a gloss but i want something lightweight i don't want no bold lip color going on so i'm going to go in with the morphe liquid matte in the shade jealousy and then i'm going to finish off with the kiko 3d hydra lip gloss in the shade 20 gently overlining my lips as well just to give it that kind of pouted finish for highlighter my brother did a very good job he brought back a highlighter for us which is the sephora delicate glow in number 10 there are some looks that can go without a highlighter not needed but for a nikah look you definitely want to look glowing and youthful and you definitely want some highlighter so make sure you do not go wrong with your highlighter your highlighter on that day cannot fail you I'm definitely going to add some here just to add to that youthful fresh glow and i know we shouldn't but when you smile i really want you guys to try and bring it to the apples of your cheeks this is a nikah makeup guys okay very innocent very cute looking that's what you want to look like like that very rarely do i add highlighter here in my smiling points but you want to okay because this is nikah makeup and this is how you do nikah makeup so you see that when you smile it goes all the way from the apple of your cheek all the way to the top you look innocent all the way from the bottom to the top top to bottom and that's it lads we're nearly done i'm gonna go in with the huda beauty resting boss face makeup setting spray now ladies listen up opting for a matte finish setting spray over your dewy makeup you guys are thinking is she dumb no i'm clever this is your special day this is your nikah you are just about to take your vows and you are going to be breaking out in sweat thanks to all of the products you use beforehand to create that beautiful dewy base this will literally save your day even if you're about to break out this will keep your entire dewy makeup together Okay, makeup done. Now onto the hard part because of me bloody nails. Please book a hijab stylist for your special day, okay? Don't try doing this on your own. Don't try this at home. <laughs> this is an Indian thing, guys. Measurements. Measurements is everything in the Indian culture. When you are wearing a tikka, apparently the last drop of the tikka is supposed to sit obviously between your brows, but just over the brow. Not too high not too low it just has to be just over the head of the brows i cannot explain it but this is apparently right and my mom taught me this and my mom would be really really proud of me if she saw me right now <laughs> okay now take the end of your sari if you know that you're going to be wearing a sari and you're going to be using the pallo on your head as your hijab or over your jewelry make sure when pinning your sari from the beginning that your pallo is super long than usual because you need that extra bit of pallo or that extra length from the pallo to really make it drape from the back and then sit over your head so knowing that obviously because i'm so clever i already done that and i got loads of pallo here so i'm going to take it over my head like so and why you need it extra long is you need it to do this if you don't have extra length then you can probably do this on this side but then this will be really short like that and that looks dumb you cannot have a pallo corner hanging by your neck jewelry that's just dumb so when you have extra space to drape you can create that really nice regal to cry and look you know like where it covers this much of the pallo you can kind of pin it there get your artist to pin it there obviously i don't have anyone to help me and the people that i do have to help me around here are really young and stuck on their phones and they're not going to help now the indian calculation of where the corner of this side of the pallo should sit is actually by your booby looby that's like the perfect place for your sari to be sitting or the other option is if you like a complete hijabi, you want to cover everything like this, then you can just like flick it back and make sure like both sides are pinned or just like let it hang and pin it here so that these are kind of like free to kind of flow about. It looks a bit more nice when it's not pinned. But if you want security, then definitely try and pin it. But I would rather not pin it because it just looks a little bit more delicate and flowy and I'd pin it from here. So um yeah and that's the finished look guys if you are going to be exchanging rings or being given a ring on the day then i would say that definitely keep your fingers bare so that the center of attention is your ring and your finger only i hope you guys enjoyed this video hit the like button if you did i hope you guys picked up some new tips and tricks by the way my daughter makes all of my false nails for every single look that i'm going to create and then i kind of just like snap them off and throw them away before the haram police come for me anyway if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel it is so important for me right now i shall see you all in another video inshallah until next time be yourself keep it real assalamualaikum always be honest keeping in my desk